Do you remember how they screamed? Aye, I remember. I'll accept my daughter. Take enough joy, sometimes one forgets the silliest things. People in town are getting a tad bit skinny. I think they're starving to death. And they're painting the streets in fucking rainbows. Have you not noticed? Have you had your joy, Ollie? Why are you all wearing those ridiculous new masks? You should get one. They shape your face into a smile. And when you smile, you can't help being happy. You were kind to me, even when I got confused. I had no one else to turn to. Oh, Ollie. We have to tell people. They need to know the truth. No, Ollie. People do not need to know the truth. Truth is the enemy of happiness. Isn't that the decision we all made? Oh. But you know the truth, don't you? There's not a thing I can tell you that you don't already know, is there? No. It's better not to know. You, of all people, should understand that. I'm truly sorry about this, Miss Bing. Is this some sort of silly prank? When I left the village, I thought you people knew what you were doing. Turns out, well, I've been keeping to myself. I have a pillbox in my kitchen. Would you mind terribly bringing me my joy? Oh, no, I can't. Please, Ollie. You were never cruel. I'm a soldier, ma'am. They teach you to be cruel. I need to see the executive committee. They won't listen. You'll only upset them, and then they'll take more joy and forget. They don't want the whole truth. No one wants the whole truth. You know what, Miss Bing? I'll come back. I'll come back when you're in your right mind. No! You can't, please. I I'll take you to the executive committee. I'll walk you there. Anything. Just please give me my joy. I need my joy. Why won't you give me my joy? Sure, I'll go get it for you right away. Now, where would a woman stash her joy? I'm afraid joy is after my time. Open the front door. Find joy pills in the house. I mean... Do we have to give her the joy pills? Or can we deny them? Here we go. She certainly hates to be off her joy, doesn't she? You're not going to give it to her. I mean... Who are we to make the decision for them? They should be allowed to cop out if they want to, right? I mean... May not be my choice, but... We could give you joy, but I think first we're going to search around your house a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look like there's a whole lot to look at down here, but there is an upstairs. Let's see what you've been up to and what do you know. I don't feel like they'd add all this if there were nothing. Candles, a burning fireplace. Oh yeah, I can loot that. Hiding that. A maid outfit? Why would you have a maid outfit? Scotch, duct tape. <laughs> I'm starting to see a theme here. 
She's living the good life by the looks of it. I mean, she definitely has a nice place. Oh, what are you, Reed? Happy New Year, my dear. Congratulations on your promotion to Executive Council, to the Executive Committee. I feel certain this will be one of Wellington Wells' happiest years, thanks to all your hard work. Your Happy Face campaign has been a rousing success. I well remember when you suggested putting joy in the water. You were right after all. I am proud to call you my daughter. Keep up the good work. Your father, General Bing. Dictated, not read. Sternly worded leather read. Uh, 5th October, 1964. There is nothing wrong with your bloody office, except that it is too small to hold your inflated ego. You seem to think if you do a terrible job and gossip about me. Don't think I didn't hear what you said to... Daedra. I'll promote you, and frankly, Arthur's thoroughput is twice yours, and far more accurate. Do not send this to Clive. Take another joy. Ooh, I don't think she likes him very much. Yeah, I see that, but why? I don't remember a lot of these names, so I'm not too sure. This is what you were looking for, wasn't it? I'm afraid I can't let you have it. Why the fuck are you doing this? You evil downer bastard! I am gonna kill you! I am going to kill you! Sorry, I need my words to stick in your head instead of flying right out the other ear. I've got to answer the blower. People depend on my decisions. Oh. She's got her own pneumatic. I better answer it. Who the hell is Clive Birthwhistle? You should find out if she likes him or not. You can't trust her, of course. Maybe there's a letter or something somewhere. They're going to need an answer right away. You don't know how critical my answers are. Oh, this is interesting. So this is going to depend on what happens to Clive. Hold. Give Clive the office. Get back to work. So this is Arthur's co-worker, the one that wanted uh, Arthur's job. We could give him the office, in which case it would screw over Arthur. Or we could go along with what she would want and just... I don't know how she would answer this, because I don't know what would be more interesting. I mean, she wants us to basically get back to work and not give him the office. Dear Mr. Birthwhistle, Thank you so much for your suggestion. May I suggest you spend a little more time pondering your work, and less time pondering where you do it? That sounds like her, all right. Off you go. This is all some clever joke, isn't it? <laughs> it's terribly funny, Ollie. Let's just call this a prank, and you can untie me now. Please. Uh -huh. Well, that's my regular off-site executive committee meeting. Won't they be surprised to find you've tied me up? What unconvincing lie are you going to try to fob them off with? You better answer it. What do I see? Tell them you're the general and the meeting's been postponed. Mm, all right. Ollie, she's going to scream if you don't gag her. Get away! <laughs> uh, all right. Hello, it's Beatrice Dalrymple from the executive committee. I'm so sorry, something's come up. Please come back tomorrow. Is that General Bing? Yeah, I haven't got time to chit chat. We're trying to save the world. Right. Tomorrow then. Tomorrow, I guess. I hope Miss Bing didn't sneak off while I wasn't looking. Take the key and lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. Take the key 
and lock her up, my fair lady. I brought some food. I made them sing, Ollie, so they wouldn't be afraid. But then they had to get on the train. Do you remember how they screamed? Aye, I remember. All except my daughter. Your daughter? Aye, Margaret. Because she was dead. <gasps> You've got to eat. Oh, I'll throw it right back up. What was it your dad fed you when you were sick and couldn't eat anything else? <laughs> Coffee yogurt. I'll bring some. Give me my joy! <laughs> Why won't you give me my joy? I'll get you that coffee yoghurt. <laughs> Why won't you give me my joy? Why won't you give me my joy? <laughs> All right, coffee yoghurt. What is yoghurt exactly? It's fermented milk, like cheese, only it doesn't curdle. So I just need some old milk and some coffee. And probably some sugar to make the medicine go down. Oh, this does not sound like a good idea. Coffee yogurt. Here we go. Well, that's coffee yogurt a la Starkey. <laughs> I hope she's not particular. Everything is quite all right. Sleepy tight, nighty night. Everything's tucked out of sight, my fair lady. I think you'd better give her that yogurt. Here you go, bud. This is awful. You've ruined it. Oh, father, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. Oh, that will be the gardeners. Perhaps you can suggest some lovely colour combinations. I think you better answer that. I didn't realise she was quite this popular. Get away from can't have you talking, I'm afraid. So who am I pretending to be? You could always pretend to be the maid. Who is it? It's Brown, the gardener. Could you get Miss Bing? I'm sorry, she's very busy. You should have said that she's out. She's very busy being out. I'll leave it with you then. Would you uh, open up, please? I haven't got time to shave. Well, wrap something around your face. And I'm a fat, ugly Scotsman. Not all maids are thin, pretty and French. You've got all the bloody answers, haven't you? Just a minute! You better make sure she's out of sight. So, should I stick her in a closet somewhere? I'm afraid so. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> Man, there's no way nobody would notice this. What's taking so long? We'll be back for you in a minute, I swear. Don't go anywhere. Let's lock that just to make sure you can't get away. Um. Oh yeah, we had an outfit. Um. Unlock, hide Victoria, and wear maid outfit. Um. Oh my god, we actually got that maid outfit. <laughs> Where is it at? <laughs> oh man. We got everything right. Here's the counting of all the gardening supplies. She could pay me next week. Cheerio. I'll see that she gets it. There are acts of heroism you never get a medal for, and they're some of the bravest. I think you'd better let her out. 
No, you may not just leave her in there for a bit. I didn't say a word. Can we be sure? Like, how's she talking? I thought she had a gag again. I thought I gagged you. Well, that's a good look for you. Suits you. You might want to shave a bit. Christ almighty, can't these people think for themselves? You must let me answer my messages. They won't know what to do on their own. I promise I won't put in any secret cries for help. I just need to answer. Who the hell is Prudence Holmes? You really ought to get out more, Ollie. Just let me point them in the right direction. Dear Miss Bing, we are attempting to ascertain the whereabouts of one of your employees, Prudence Holmes. We fear she may have become a downer. Have you seen her at your office or domicile or received any indication of her whereabouts? We would like to know when you last spoke so, to her. She's around, no idea how to answer. I would say no idea how to answer because saying she's around would be a bad idea, I think. I mean, it says we can't say that, though. There's got to be a way. There's got to be something in this desk or something that we missed, maybe. Oh, well, that helps. Is this what we're looking for? Read. Um, you are allowed to cross to the parade district. Letter of transit. Ooh, that's exactly what we needed, but... Oh, we needed a better answer. Because if we say she's around, they're looking for her. We don't want them here. Ah, uh, here we go. Read. Uh, July 1932. Rasten Central Prison. My, de uh, my darling Victoria, I'm sure your father has told you his version of why I've been sent away. Please know that I love you and never intended to leave you. I hope that someday you will understand that I was doing my own duty just as he does his. India cannot remain under British rule any longer. Surely even he can see that. I fear for your future if he takes you back to England. I was there for boarding school and for all they give you your rank at the table and seat you as a proper for the daughter of a... Uh, when they look at you and see a wog, you won't be half English. I'm England, you will always be a wog, no matter how hard you work to imitate their ways. I'm writing to your grandfather, asking him to take you in. When your father goes back to England, he did not mean to shout at you when you called his palace backwards for not having electric fans. He was thinking about politics. Please be a good girl and make up with his highness, your grandfather. I suspect that you will disregard my advice as it comes from prison. Your father must seem like the much smarter parent right now. But someday you will know all the things that I know. I hope you will understand who you are and what your true duty is before it is too late. Your loving mummy. So they sent her mother to prison for something. I'm sure you'll say that having me arrested was your duty, but duty to whom? Does not your own family command your loyalty? I thought you were different, but you are like the other Englishmen. How very convenient for you to be done of your Indian wife before you sail home. Once you were dazzled by my father's palace and connections, without which you might still be a junior officer, but when your orders came for England, you began to see me with diff see me with different, more critical eyes, didn't you? Or perhaps you found out that I'd contact a solicitor. Divorce is rather scandalous among the officer set. Perhaps you are worried it would have harmed your career. Oh, but now that you've made the great sacrifice of arresting your own wife, you might even get promoted to general for your patriotism. Bravo, Pinky, bravo. 
You English do go for that duty above all tosh. You may fool others with it, but I will always know exactly who you are. Perhaps that is the true reason you can no longer bear to meet my eyes. You no lo <clears throat> I no longer know how to sign off on a letter to you. Neither love nor yours seems appropriate anymore. Lily, P.S. I've asked my father to take Victoria when you sail for England. Don't pretend you object. You've undoubtedly been trying to think of, think of a fa saving reason to leave her behind. What with her being the half-Indian daughter of a revolutionary. How very inconvenient that would be for you back home. Oh. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Is that her mom? Didn't see this room before. This must have unlocked before. Or after, rather. By the time you read this... Dearest V, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. Leaving you is the hardest part of what I have to do. You were right about being off joy. The others were easy to fool, but you, of course, were always so attuned to my moods. I'm sorry for saying you were just imagining it, but I did so want to <clears throat> but I did so to protect you. You must know by now my true feelings for you, though I suspect they are not reciprocated. Please don't come looking for me. We both know that your sense of duty is at the core of your being. I will always remain your true friend, even though our paths must diverge. Yours truly, Prue. Uh, she's been gone. Uh, all right. I'm afraid she's been gone from the office for some time. Good luck. Why do I feel like a squealer? Off you go. I was your friend. The only one who was nice to you. Why would you do this to me? From the secret shadows of dawn, there's a darkness to disguise. The simple thought I recognize. 